Jesus! What the like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment down below and I just might end up responding. Professional wrestling is a fascinating little nugget in the entertainment industry. If you think about it, in a way, WWE has been continuously telling the same ongoing story that has now lasted for about 70 years. From your Sam Martinos and Hogan's to your Rollins and your Reigns's, the WWE has somehow managed to perfectly wrap up every single thread of storyline over the years and hasn't ever moved on to leave a single question unanswered or try to rewrite their own history. Never. They would never. I'm Dee Wicked from Watch WWE, and here's 10 of the biggest WWE mysteries that never ended up being solved. Number 10. Who tried to murder Vince McMahon? So back in 2007, WWE aired a segment in which Vincent Kennedy McMahon slowly strolled his way backstage, passing every single superstar, including a cheeky Paul London showing off his choppers in an act of unintentional defiance that got the man fired. I am not kidding. At the end of Vince's walk, he finds himself in a limousine, and after a comedic amount of time with one leg in and one leg out of the car, he finally shuts that door and Kaboom! Bye bye Vinnie Mac. WWE tried painting this as a legitimate death and their timing could not have been worse as it would air the very same week as the Chris Benoit incident, where, if you didn't know, people did die for real. Obviously, running a death storyline side by side a real life tragedy would have been insanity, so they chucked this angle in the can. But still to this day, WWE has not gone back and tried explaining just what happened on that night in 07. Number 9. Who tried to murder Hideo Itami? A lot of murders so far. All, always a good idea to lure viewers in the first few minutes with positivity. Hideo Itami! There's a name I haven't said out loud for a while, and neither have you. The former 5-year NXT signee has finally made his way back to Japan and is currently one of the top dogs in New Japan's Bullet Club. Thankful for the man once again known as Kenta too, because Hideo just was not it. The dude got so unlucky with injuries that plagued the entirety of his WWE career all five years, and to write him off TV, Hideo also found himself in an unlucky parking lot scenario. Instead of walking into an explosion, however, Hideo was simply found injured outside. While WWE technically did not ever explain what happened or who attacked Tommy, I'd like to think the video where he gets found sort of gives away who was behind the attack. You alright? Talk to us, man. That's a shame. Number 8. Why did the Great Kali return? Alternate question. Why is the Great Kali? That's a mystery Nostradamus couldn't wrap his head around with about six spare lifetimes of thinking, so I'll back that one up a bit. A decade after WWE tried murdering their CEO, they said, F it, let's try murdering our top belt too, and handed Jinder Mahu the the WWE Championship. It was bad, and especially so because Mahal actually held that belt for about half of 2017. Yet through all that nonsense, the somehow strangest moment to come out of this absolute hellish void... Well, let me just read a sentence out loud to you, okay? And whenever it gets weird, just, you know, let me know. WWE Champion Jinder Mahal, and if you haven't said stop in your mind yet, get help. WWE Champion Don't Hinder That Gender faced Randall Keith Orton in a Punjabi prison match that saw the great Kali come out, interfere on behalf of Gender, and lead to Mahal retaining. WWE then not only didn't explain why Kali came to Gender's aid beyond the word India, they also never mentioned the great Kali again. Oh the God. great Kali has just showed up! I cannot believe the what Punjabi I have seen. Prison. Got a hold of Randy Orton by the throat! Number seven. So, like, what was going on with Dolph Ziggler around late 2017? Dolph Ziggler's 2010s were quite the ridiculous roller coaster of a decade, especially past that halfway point. 2015 saw that whole Rusev, Lana, Ziggler, Summer Raid, Four Way Love. Oh. If you couldn't figure out how awful that ended up being, go ahead and throw on some of those Lashley Lana Rusev clips and remind yourself. 2016 would see Ziggles do the best work of his career, 
and it was against The Miz, who was not at the peak he's at right now. People thought, whoa, what the hell? These two mid-tier past their prime wrestlers both just 180'd into the most interesting thing happening. Where is this going to go? Well, Ziggler started losing. He turned heel, took a few months off TV, came back around in August to announce he'd be changing his gimmick only to mock different wrestler entrances over the next few weeks, citing that the fans only cared about a flashy gimmick before changing his entrance theme to a literal record scratch erasing himself of a gimmick and instead sort of posing as a figure of anti-gimmick? I guess? He then won the United States Championship, told the fans they didn't deserve his reign, left the belt in the middle of the ring, and just straight up disappeared for a silent month before coming out as number 30 in the Royal Rumble, not even 30 full days later. Number six, who was behind GTV? Still one of the most bizarre, forgotten angles of WWE's yesteryear. This is a short, simple one. For months, random segments would air that were recorded by GTV, some kind of hidden camera gotcha setup that would record wrestlers in embarrassing moments backstage, and whoever this mystery person was behind it all would, I don't know, hack into WWE production and air the clips? I don't know. Doesn't really add up, but then again, why does entrance music play whenever an invader invades a match? Or, you know, the Shield and the Nexus. I don't know. Sometimes pro wrestling just doesn't fully add up. The angle was very quickly dropped, and the person behind it still remains a mystery to this day. <laughs> they call you the Big Show? <laughs> what? Number five. So since when can the timekeeper overrule referee? Imaginary $5 to the person in the comments who actually knows the match I'm talking about before I tell you. Don't worry about it being imaginary. No one really believed you anyway. SummerSlam 2015, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker in what was almost easily the worst match the two ever put on. As if the match itself wasn't all that great, the ending really put a damper on everything. As Brock Lesnar would tap out The Undertaker, and referee Charles Robinson was in a position where he couldn't see the tap out, but the timekeeper could, and for the first, and I believe only time in history, the timekeeper rung the bell without a call from the ref. It was very confusing, pointlessly overbooked the finish that could have so easily gone any other direction that didn't involve the Undertaker tapping out for the first and only time ever. Number four, what happened to Brock Lesnar versus Shane McMahon? So a year later, Brock Lesnar is once again stirring the pot in the main event of a SummerSlam, only this time he's stirring the pot with his elbows, and he's doing so by viciously repeatedly ramming them into the head of a viper. Orton got absolutely smashed, and hoping to save his SmackDown roster member, Shane McMahon came out to try putting a stop to Brock's seemingly endless assault. Bork would then F5 Mrs. McMahon's baby boy and leave him him crumpled in a heap next to the now dead snake man and honestly how did this not become a match it feels like it's really trying to set up a match it feels really weird that i'm upset that a shane mcmahon match didn't happen but him throwing his body on the line against brock lesnar just might be the biggest missed opportunity of 2016 and that's the month that Sami Zayn debuted on the main roster Number three, what was inside of that lockbox? Continuing with this odd theme of reintroducing names from our last entry, Shane McMahon now returns, and ironically enough, the biggest mystery surrounding the number one McMahon happened to be the night of his return. February something 2016, good research, D. Wicked. It would have been a total surprise if you just said that Shane McMahon was backstage at a WWE event, but by the night's end, we knew that Shane McMahon would be fighting The Undertaker at WrestleMania inside Hell in a Cell, and it would decide whether or not he had control over Monday Night Raw. So yeah, a bombshell in a bunker, essentially. Yet the most shocking thing, still, Shane specifically mentioning that there's something inside of a lockbox that Vince won't want Shane to bring back up, and you, you know what he did? He never brought it back up. Wh what? 
What exactly could be inside of a lockbox that'd bring down Vincent Kennedy McMahon? We'll have a conversation Is later. Is it true, Dad? And we're gonna have a conversation. Is this true? And and the award will be presented to you backstage. Number two. Who raised the briefcase? And weird entry reintroduction concept continues as our number two also features a match in which the control of Monday Night Raw is up in the air, uh, but quite literally this time. Oh, and I guess Shane is sort of involved in this one too. Hey ho, it's Shane O. Steve Austin fought off both father and son, Vincent and Shane McMahon in a two-on-one handicapped ladder match with the rights to WWE hanging above the ring. Austin was mere inches away from winning the match and therefore gaining full control of WWE before the briefcase is mysteriously lifted just out of his reach. Clearly McMahon had a plan going into this, but he decided to never disclose that plan or ever give it a big reveal because over 20 years later, and this very pivotal moment in likely the most important pro wrestling feud ever, and we have no idea who they were in cahoots with. And number one, who threw that pie at Kevin Owens? Justice for KO. No. And those are 10 of the biggest unsolved WWE mysteries of all time. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and notifications, ring that bell.